did. Oh, uh, I think I did. Let's see here. No, that's not the mic. Uh, where's the mic? Down here. Recording devices. Yep, we're mic'd up. Thank you. Okay, so let's start again. Section 4.2. We're going to discuss the law of sines. So just briefly to review the notation, you have angles of alpha, beta, and gamma. Opposite each angle is a side that corresponds to it. So opposite alpha is A, opposite beta is B, opposite gamma is side of length C. So the law of sines simply says that the ratio of the sine of an angle and its opposite side are proportional all throughout the triangle. So what your goal is going to be is to try and find one of these known ratios that is an angle and opposite side pair and then an unknown value or a known and unknown value to complete uh, or at least help complete uh, a proportion. And we're going to solve for the remaining unknown. Now there's a lot of different cases that you can solve with uh, the law of sines, not everything. Eventually we're going to need the law of cosines as well. But for starters, let's take a look at a problem like number 18 and see what they give us. So I'm in the wrong page, sorry. There we go. I have a habit of kind of laying things out methodically like this. Alpha, beta, and gamma. And what do they give us? Uh, they give us that uh, we've got an angle of 50 degrees. And C is 20 degrees. Or gamma is 20 degrees. Now if we know those two, what else do we know? Yeah, what does the third one have to be? 110 degrees. Now we get that one because it has to total up to 180. So once we know two of the angles, we obviously get the third one automatically. The last thing that we know is that side A has length 3. B and C are unknown, but we can solve for those. So let's do that. Now in working with the law of sines, you're going to need to choose an angle and opposite side pair. So that would be this one right here. You need to know one of these pairs in order to help solve with the other ones. So let's set this up according to the law of sines. It's going to be the sine of 50 degrees divided by 3 equals the sine of 110 degrees over B. This is a proportion. So you can cross multiply. We're going to get B times the sine of 50 degrees equals 3 times the sine of 110 degrees. Divide both sides by sine of 50. I get B equals 3 sine of 110 divided by the sine of 50. Here's where we take our calculators and come up with some decimal values. What mode should your calculator be in? Degrees. Good. So let's put our calculator in degree mode and calculate this. I'm not going to try and get fancy with the fraction bar. Let's just do it this way. 3, whoops, yeah, it's in degrees. 3 sine of 110. Make sure you hit the right parenthesis to close off the sine. You don't want to take the sine of something other than 110. Divided by sine of 50. So 3.68. So I'll round it to two decimal places. I'll tell you how far I want it rounded, if, unless it's obvious for other reasons. So in this case, 3.68 is our approximate answer. Let's take a look at gamma. I need to use gamma to, in order to find the length of side C. So what proportion can I set up for gamma? I'd go with this because we've, um, we've got a nice exact value. Yeah, but you're right. You can use A or B. So let's, let's set up this one, though. Sine of 50 
divided by 3. What would the rest of that look like, Brenda? Sine of 20 degrees over C. Thanks. Sine of 20 degrees over C. We can again cross multiply and solve. C sine of 50 equals 3 sine of 20, or C equals 3 sine of 20 divided by the sine of 50. Okay, so let's calculate that one. 3 sine of 20 divided by the sine of 50. What are you guys getting? 1.34. One point three four. It's three three nine, etc. But yeah, thanks. Round it off to one point three four. Cool. So not bad, right? All right. Let's leave a little space here. Maybe we might want to come back and visit that one again later. But for now, um, that looks pretty good. There is one thing that I want to point out about this. But let me give you a chance to ask a question if there's something that wasn't very clear in what we did here. That looked all right there? The 20 was given originally? Okay. Take a look at the sides and their corresponding angles. Do you notice any pattern, now that we've got them all calculated, is there any kind of pattern or rhyme or reason to the angles on opposite sides, their lengths? Yeah. Biggest side, or bit longest side, biggest angle. Smallest side, smallest angle. Middle and middle, all right? That should always, always be true. Why? Well, the law of science guarantees it. They're all in proportion. So that should always be something you look for. And it's actually going to be our guide. Sometimes we're going to have to make some choices. And our choices are going to be guided by this principle. That biggest side and biggest angle are always going to go together. Likewise with the rest of them. Smallest so side and smallest angle. That, should we draw a triangle according to that or does it matter? You know, it's, 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 sometimes it's tough to try and draw these things uh, ahead of time. Yeah. And uh, what we're going to find as we do the law of signs is that this is the nice case. It's not always going to work out this nice. There's going to be other things that can happen. Sometimes you won't get any solution. Sometimes you'll get exactly one solution. Sometimes you'll get two solutions. It just depends on the numbers that you are given. So a lot of different things can happen. And one thing that I'm going to do here is go through all the different cases here with us so that you get an experience on that. Um... You're going to need to know at least one side. Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, any three pieces. Of, well, let's see. If you had all three angles, then, yeah, I guess I guess you you couldn't necessarily determine the length of the side unless you had at least one of the sides. So, yeah. We need to know one of the sides um, and at least one of the angles. Actually, if you had all three sides, you could solve for the angles, but not the other way around. Let's try problem number 28. So this one's going to be a little bit different than the last one in terms of how we solve this. A equals 2, B is unknown, C is 1, alpha is 120 degrees. Okay, well, the good news for us is that we've got an angle and opposite side pair right here. And since we got one other piece of information, that means we can at least make some progress using the law of sines. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's set that up. That'd be sine of 120 degrees divided by 2 equals what? Yeah, sine of gamma over 1. Like I promised, this one's going to be a little bit different. What's the unknown that I'm solving for here? Yeah, it's gamma. So how am I going to get gamma by itself? 
Uh, not quite. All right, but how? How are you going to solve for it? Mm, you can't really multiply here. Charbel? Ah, well done. What you need to do is you need to take the inverse sine on both sides. So let's see that. Sine inverse of the sine of 120 divided by 2 equals sine inverse of the sine of gamma. Now, a long time ago, we went over this stuff. These two operations are going to cancel each other out. I'm just going to get gamma. The rest of this is stuff that I have to calculate on my calculator. So let's do that. Let me clean this up a little bit for you. Sine of 120. Some help on getting this. You can do it all in one go, and that's fine. But let me show you a little trick in terms of calculating that without you know too much stress and strain figuring out what to do and where to put the parentheses, etc. Let's just start by calculating the inside part first. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So I'll do the sine of 120, close parentheses, divided by 2. But then what? Then I want the inverse sine of that previous answer, right? So let's type in the inverse sine, second, and then press the sine key of that previous answer. Now to get that previous answer, we're going to press this key right above the opposite key on the bottom row of your calculator is a little key that says A and S. So if you hit the second button, and then this, it's going to take the inverse sine of your previous answer. So you don't have to type it in, it's just there. It takes that number, it takes its inverse sine, and you get 25 point, call it 66 degrees. So nice. Let's put that down as... 25.658, etc. We'll round it off to the nearest hundredth. I'm not going to get obsessive here. So this is 25.66 approximately. Now, a good thing to do is to actually just keep this number around because we're going to need it. And let's just keep this round, keep this around and don't round it. Use the unrounded version. For instance, one of the things I need is I need to figure out gamma and B. Uh, you know what? I just did gamma. Sorry, I put this in the wrong spot. Wait a minute. A little bit of uh, digital Photoshop here. Beautiful. So there we go, 25.66. How am I going to figure out beta? Now, a couple things we can do. Uh, you can hit the store key. Hit the store key right next to the number one. Store that in X. Just keep that, keep that around for later on. You don't have to do this. But I want to figure out what this is. Remember, these have to total up to 180, right? So here's what I'll do. I'll take 180 minus X minus the 120, and that's what's left over. That's beta. Cool. So what did we get? We got 34.34. You don't have to do it that way. It's just a little finesse. There's one last thing we need to set up for and solve, and that's B. What should I set up for, or how can I set up something to get B? Perfect. Thank you, Roy. So, sine 120 over 2 equals sine of 34.34 over B. You're going to get pretty good at cross-multiplying and dividing and all that stuff. So, let me start hastening this process. When you cross-multiply, I'm going to get B times the sine of 120 equals 2 times the sine of 34. 
Divide both sides by sine of 120. Sine of 34.34 divided by sine of 120. So, again, this is just a numerical calculation. Let's crank that out on our calculators. I think, yeah, my last answer is this. I could actually use that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to fuss with it. Let's just do 2 sine of 34. Uh, come on. 2 sine of 34.34. Right parenthesis divided by sine of 120. Yeah, 1 1.30 approximately. Rounded to the nearest hundredth. Uh, you don't really have to. You just keep storing over it next time you need to store a value. It's a great question. It, it won't affect the graph at all. Yes. Somebody argue that this does or doesn't make sense. Why is that? Longest side, biggest angle, smallest or shortest side, smallest angle, middle and middle. So is that a complete proof? You got it completely right? No, but it, at least it helps. All right. It'll catch some errors. So keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Okay. So we've seen a couple nice cases in working with the law of sines. So far, so good? Yes? Let's take a look at problem number 30. A, B, and C. Alpha beta, and gamma. So a 2 and a 3, and 40 degrees, and well, we don't know the rest. Hmm. OK. Well, we can at least get started here, right? We'll get us started. All right, sine of 40 over 2 equals sine of gamma over 3. You have to start that way. There's really not much choice because we only have one pair like this, a known angle on opposite side. So if you're going to use the law of sines, that's exactly where you have to go. Not bad. So let's see here. I'll multiply both sides by 3. Let me write that as 3 halves times a sine of 40 equals a sine of gamma. Yeah, that's a rotten gamma. That's still a rotten gamma. Whatever. How are we going to solve for gamma here? I should call on Anna to solve for gamma. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like that. A little poetry here. Go ahead. Take the inverse sine of both sides. Good. Take the inverse sine of both sides. And let's just cut to the chase. The inverse side of 3 halves of sine of 40, that's going to equal gamma. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's do that on our calculators. I'm going to do 1.5 because I'm too lazy to type in 3 divided by 2. 1.5 times a sine of 40. And then I'll do second sine inverse and second of my previous answer. Look, there's nothing wrong. If you want to do it all in one go, if you want to just say, okay, I'm just not going to mess around with that, you can do sine inverse of 1.5 times a sine of 40. Make sure you nest all your parentheses correctly. That's fine. It gives you the same exact thing. Just wanted to let you have, show that you have options here. Um, but you know what? It's actually not bad that I did it my way. Let me go back to this. 1.5 times the sine of 40 um, gave me that 
the sine of gamma was 0.964. Now it's true that we got an answer for gamma of 74.61, but there's a little bit more to the story here. Let's remind ourselves of something. The sine is which coordinate on the unit circle? It's the y coordinate. So I know that the y coordinate is around 0.964. So let's draw that. It's right on the unit circle. So about there. So 0.964 is about here, just roughly speaking. I'm not trying to be incredibly precise. And if we draw a line over here, we see that we get around you know a 74, 75 degree angle, at which the y coordinate has a height of 0 0.964, 74.61. But I said that's not the only story. There's another point over here with that same y coordinate, isn't there? There's two solutions. So what's that one? You know one angle is 74.61. What's this angle? Nah, not quite at 90. But I'll tell you what, this, this angle right here, let me squeeze it in here, that angle is also the same as this one. It's 74.61. That's going this way. So what's the orange angle going to be? How am I going to figure that out? Yeah, so, so how about we go here. If we start out here, halfway around the unit circle is what? 180. 180. We're not going quite that far. So how far do we go? 180 minus 74.61. All right, so that's going to be our other angle. So let's do that on our calculators here. I can do 180 minus the previous answer, 105.38. So... This other answer here is 105.38. And this should probably have been 74.62 if I had rounded it carefully. So I got two cases. Do they both work? Well, let's find out. So let's go back here. Case one. Well, we have to check. We have to check. So let me let me plug it in and see if they both work. So we had A, B, and C. If the first one works, we have to do the same. Yes. Yeah. With the law of signs, you really pretty much have to check them both uh, for cases like this. So this was 40. And case 2. A, B, and C, alpha, beta, gamma, that's 40, 2, and 3. So let's plug in our two various solutions. So one possibility was 74.62. Does that leave me enough room to form a triangle? Can I, can I find an angle alpha so that all these total up to 180 degrees? Yeah. 65.38. All right, I'm taking any word on that, but that seems pretty pretty good. So 65.38. How about over here? The other possibility was 105.38. Does that leave me enough room to form uh, another triangle. Can I find a different value for alpha? Yeah. 
And in that case, it's going to be what? 34.62? Yeah, All right, 34.62. Now, what you're going to see happen is that sometimes when you look for that second case, this angle here is going to be too big. For instance, if I got a 145 degree angle for gamma, 145 plus 40 is already bigger than 180. So I couldn't find an alpha that would make that work. But if it's small enough, then you can get something that works. So we got to solve both cases. Now the good news is that really there's only one thing left to solve for, right? And that's A. So we have to solve for A in both cases. How do we know if there's two cases you, you don't. You always have to check. I mean, even for myself, and I've been teaching this course a long time, I can't look at these and go, oh, well, there's going to be two cases here, or one case here, or none here. You just don't know. You have to check. So uh, this time, we got two cases. Sometimes you only get one. And we'll take a look back at problem number 18, and maybe, no, maybe 28, and see what's going on with that one. Okay, so we've got a known angle on opposite side. Actually, we have two known angles on opposite side pairs. I would go with this one because these were the numbers that were given. They're not rounded uh, like these are. So let's use this and this to calculate the first one. So it's going to be sine of 40 divided by 2 equals sine of 65.38 divided by A. If you don't mind, I'm going to hurry this up. Cross multiply and then divide is going to be A equals 2 times the sine of 65.38 divided by the sine of 40. So that's one possibility. Let's see how that one shakes out. 2 sine of 65.38. Make sure you put in that right parenthesis. You don't want to divide your angle by, say, the sine of 40. Um, and then calculate the sine of that. So divide by sine of 40. 2.828. Okay, 2.828. So about 2.83. Does this line up? Does it pass muster? Well, yeah. Longest side, largest angle. Smallest side, smallest angle. Middle and middle. So it works. Why don't you try and find the other one? See if you can't find A for the other one. Fair looking. David, put your head down. Find A. <laughs> Got it? Okay. All right. No, I'm not asking for it. I was just checking. What did you get this time? 1.76? 1. 1.77? 1. Which one? 7.7. All right, so 1.77. Again, it makes sense. Longest, largest, shortest, smallest. So both of those make sense. There's really two possibilities depending on how the sides line up. So... See. Um, good question. Well, let's go back to the last question. Now that we understand that there's these two possibilities, let's take another look back at problem number 30. Before I go back to problem number 30, are we okay with what we did here? Ah, not back to problem, problem 28. Um, before I go back there, 
Are we okay with these two cases here? Charbel? Mm. Which which number is, is wrong? Do I have these mixed up? Mm. Oh, I mixed up alpha and gamma. Yeah, I, I think I think the alpha and gamma are just interchanged here for me. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying, and, and you're exactly right. Appreciate that. So, I solved for A. Um, yeah, boy. Um, hmm. Let's see. No, let's see. I put that in for gamma. No, no, no. Let's see. We had two possibilities for gamma. We solved for both of them. And we got this alpha. Up here? What should I have, what should I have written here? 34.62. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. I see what you're saying. 34.62. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's, let's look back at problem number 28. Because in problem number 28, we just kind of blissfully glided through and we only got one solution, right? Let's take a closer look at problem 28. So, let's see. We started out with alpha was 2, beta was, un or B was, uh, C was 1, alpha was 120, right? Uh, beta and gamma were unknown. Okay, so we did the law of sines. The law of sines said the sine of 120 divided by 2 was the sine of gamma divided by 1. So sine of 120 divided by 2, let's actually get a decimal value for that this time. So sine of 120 divided by 2. So 0 0.4330, etc., is the sine of of gamma. If I want gamma, it's going to be the inverse sine of this. So it's the inverse sine of 0 0.4330 is gamma. Let's take a look at the two solutions we get out of that. So I'll draw ourselves a little half circle again. And we're going to work with the inverse sine. So here's a half circle. This time, the y height that we're trying to match, we effectively have y equals 0 0.4330. So somewhere around here. Not really sure where. It doesn't matter too much. So here or here. So y equals 0 0.4330. All right, did somebody solve for me to get the first of these possibilities? What's that first one? That's, that's the only one that your calculator is going to give you is the sine inverse of this. Sine inverse, in fact, we already got that one, right? 25.66. So 25.66. So that's this one right here, 25.66. But let's keep in mind that there's another one. And that other one is over here. Again, this angle is going to be 25.66. But that's not the angle we're directly interested in, right? What we want is this angle. So what's that angle? Good. Yeah, 180 minus that. Perfect. All 
All right, so we'll start out with the inverse sine of that gave me 25.66. I'll take 180 minus the previous answer. So I got these are my two possibilities for for that angle. For which one is it? Gamma. I've got 25.66 or 154.34. Why is that too big? Yeah. Those two angles add up to way more than 180, right? So this can't form another triangle. So you get exactly one case that you have to deal with. So is that what we would write on an exam? Just say there's only one solution. So what I'll do on all your problems that involve this kind of stuff is I'll write down the same basic information twice, case one and case two. Okay. And if you need case two, fill it in. If you don't need case two, you just leave it blank. All right. But let me be clear about this. You always need to look for case two. Now, not that I, I need to tell you this, but let's just think a little bit as, as students for just a second. We're spending a fair amount of effort on case two. If you look at old exams, you'll find a problem with case two on it. Moving forward, what should you be ready for? Case two. Case two. All right. Um, I'm pretty predictable in that sense. So, okay. Let's try problem 34. Let's find out. Chances are that you won't get two solutions if you have a, your first solution is really, really small. It's, it's the ones that are, you know, mid-range that are going to tend to give you two solutions. I mean, it's not a precise way to work at it, but, you know, it's, it's a guide, so good thinking. Okay, problem 34. A is unknown, B is 4, C is 5, alpha is unknown, beta is 95, and gamma is unknown. But at least we have enough to get started. We can start by setting up the law of sines with this angle on opposite side. So set up the law of sines and see if you can't solve for gamma. Get a little ways on that. I'll walk around.
shot on an answer. What did you get for the angle? 12.89. Uh, well, let's see here. So the law of sines you should be setting up would look like this. Sine of 95 divided by 4 equals the sine of gamma divided by C. Or excuse me, divided by 5, sorry. Divided by 5. So I'll multiply both sides by 5. I get 5 fourths times the sine of 95 equals the sine of gamma. And let's actually calculate what that is. Yeah, well, 5 fourths is, is 1.25 times the sine of 95. And I actually want a decimal value here. So 1.25 times the sine of 95. Sine of 95 should be close to 1. Because you're close to a 90 degree angle, sine of 90 degrees is 1. So I should be close to 1.25. 1.245. Okay, so let's write that down. 1.245. That's the sine of gamma. Uh, but let's stop here. Let's think about the sine. Sine was the y coordinate on your unit circle. Yeah, that, that means that's too tall, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to find something here on the unit circle, 0, 1, that's way up here. Yeah, so you're not going to find anything. And, and you see that when you try and take the inverse sign. You're getting a domain error, right? So inverse sign of my previous answer, domain error. Well, of course, it's too big for the inverse sign. Values for the inverse sine have to be between negative 1 and 1. So there's no solution. So that's the third case. We've had three different cases. We had one solution, two solutions, and no solutions. So you just can't predict these things ahead of time by looking at the problems. Let's try and understand a little bit about what's going wrong here when we're solving these things. First of all, these cases all have names. It depends on the geometry of what you're given. This is on page 264. Uh, you can have an angle side angle problem. That means you know two adjacent angles and the length of the side between. You can have a side angle angle problem. Something like this. Side side angle side angle side. A side angle side is a problem because if you had a side angle side you couldn't actually do this with the law of sines. Remember what you need in the law of sines. You need to know an angle and opposite side. You don't have that here. Now, you don't exactly have it with, with this one but you can calculate this because you know these other two angles. So effectively you can use the law of sines here. But you can't with a side angle side type of problem where the angle that you know is sandwiched between the two sides that you know. Here we're going to have to use the law of cosines. Side, side, side is another instance where you're going to have to use the law of cosines to solve here. Yes? So these last two are law of cosines. Oh, okay. Oh, what's in blue is what we have. Yeah, what's in blue is what you have. So what's going wrong with uh, our current case? Well, it was a side-side angle problem. And basically what happened is with our two unknowns, or with our two knowns, when you tried to solve for the length of another side, it was it was too short. Couldn't get there. It just didn't fit. So there's no solution. As far as our two-case problem, uh, an example of that. Is you can form this triangle once you solve solve it. You can form it in a couple ways. You can have a nice big obtuse angle here, or that angle could be smaller. Basically, this side can touch the other side in a couple different ways. So that's why you're getting two possibilities. Both of them can form triangles. It's not always going to happen. Typically, you know, typically you get one solution, but there are other cases. Anything else on problem number 34? Okay, we'll get some more practice with the law of 
sines as we do some problems with the law of cosines. So let's stop things here. For homework, try 9 through 41 and 51 through 55. And that's section 4.2.